Hello, hi, and welcome to episode number 18 of An Italian Knitting Podcast. My name is Francesca. I'm an Italian knitter. I live in the northeast of Italy with my husband, our daughter, and our cat. I'm a software engineer and I work from home. I'm not sure what else you'd like to know about me. I think that's it. This is a knitting podcast that follows the traditional format. So I'm going to take you through my finished objects, which I don't know why I'm saying it plural because I have one. And I'll show you works in progress and a little bit of acquisitions. I don't have a lot of time today, so I hope I'll be able to still talk slowly and not rush through things. but. My husband and daughter are graciously outside the house for an hour or so, I hope, and so I should have enough time to chat with you about my knitting. But I don't know, whenever I have a set amount of time, like a deadline type thing, it stresses me a little bit. I think it's very normal. I'm not saying I'm special. Yeah, anyway, drinking a lovely cup of tea and I will start by talking about that famous finished object. It's the cardigan that I'm wearing in this lovely green color. This was a test knit. It's the Moonlight Cardigan by Minimi Knit Design. I'm wearing it on top of a store-bought, not hand-knitted sweater, just to kind of showcase how I typically wear cardigans that don't have sleeves. I feel like the intended proper official pictures of this cardigan show the cardigan either with like bare arms, like on a fancy camisole or like a fancy dressy top. Or maybe I think I saw some pictures on top of a long sleeve shirt, but not a sweater. And how I enjoy wearing this cardigan up until now, so I guess over the past couple of days since I cast it off, is on top of a lightweight sweater. I'm enjoying this cardigan as I would like a shawl or a sleepover. So like just as an added layer of coziness, like my shoulder area. And I find that whenever I wear shawls, since I don't use like shawl pins or anything to really keep them in place, they fall off. I'll demonstrate for you. I don't know if this is necessary, but I have my half and half wrap next to me. So if I do this, like I drape it the traditional way over my shoulders, then I don't know if I go to do something that involves me standing up and I don't know, maybe picking things up from the floor, this would somehow or sometimes kind of move and instead if you use a cardigan I guess the good thing is that it will stay in place so this doesn't go anywhere right like it might open up a little bit like in this sexy movement motion but like it'll stay put on your shoulders so it will keep your shoulders as warm as you want them to be the recommended yarn for this pattern is a combination of the usual fingering wool and a mohair. And I've used Drops, my favorite, Drops Flora and Drops Kid Silk in this lovely ocean green. Is that the right name? Sure. Like an ocean green type of combination. And I really like it. I don't think I have anything in this precise like specific color and I really like it. I honestly don't know if it suits me. I have not taken the proper test, the seasons one, like the one that matches you with the colors that you should wear. So I don't know, but I think I like it. I think it would work well in a spring summer appropriate yarn. So cotton, a linen, the pattern as of right now is out. You can purchase it and it does not have sleeves. So it is in the same exact format that you see me wearing it right now. However, the designer is about to add sleeves, a sleeve option, I guess, to this pattern. I hope to test that out for her. I have some more yarn to continue in the same exact colorway, of course. And I think for me, a woolly wool 
cardigan with sleeves is more usable than a sleeveless, sleeveless cardigan. I am not super, super confident in this statement, but I feel like if it had sleeves, then I would just wear it on its own without having to wear a sweater or something underneath. So I think it's more versatile. Just kind of chug it on when you wake up in the morning or when you're, I don't know, leaving the house. Instead here, whatever you have underneath peeks through. So for example, you need to make sure that the color of whatever you have underneath matches the color of your cardigan and things like that. I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is that if I have the chance to add sleeves, I will do so. I think you will see this cardigan with sleeves next time that you see me. In terms of construction, this is a top-down construction. The yoke is quite fun to put together because you knit a little bit and then you pick up stitches and then you do a little bit. So at the beginning is quite fun and engaging and it keeps you wanting to knit a little bit more. But then after you get under the armpits area, the body is quite mindless and it just gutter stitch knitted flat. So it's knit, 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 knit. The only purling you have to do are on the button band. So you have a rolling, I would call it, button band in knit stitches and on the other side those are purls. So you just have this amount of purling for one button, no button band, there's no buttons. So for one band and some purling on the other band, but it's not much, like I was able to do it and if I was able to do it, you're able to do it too. I'm the purl hater here. You can trust me that if I was able to do it, it's not too much purling at all. The fact that this doesn't have sleeves, it truly means that you can just continue the length until you have no yarn left. When you have sleeves, which is 99% of the garments that you knit probably, or that I knit at least, what you need to do is like be mindful that you need to finish both sleeves and then continue on the body until you don't have yarn left. So you still need to do some of, at least some part of the sleeves before continuing on the body and do your yarn management that way. However, with no sleeves, it just means that you don't have to think about having enough yarn for the sleeves, right? So you just go straight until you have no yarn left. In my case, since I knew I wanted to add sleeves and that there would be the option to add sleeves, I have extra yarn, so I didn't actually continue up until it was out of yarn, but I think that's a very, very valid option. And the cardigan actually took less yarn that you would use for a full-on sweater or cardigan with sleeves in its current version, right? Because it doesn't have sleeves. So I used four bowls of each of the two yarns. So four of the drops flora and four of the mohair. So we're talking about 840 meters. This is like a 210 meters or so multiplied by four, which for a size small, I cannot usually get a sweater with sleeves. So if you have like an odd quantity of like a DK weight yarn, either in like a DK single strand or combination of finger and mohair, I think this is a good option. For a sleepover, I think usually you need less than this yarn. So I think this is kind of in between a sleepover yarn quantity and a full on cardigan or sweater yarn quantity. So I think it's a good option for when you don't have enough to do a sweater, but you have more than for a sleepover. This was a really specific tangent, but that's what my brain thinks about when I don't control it. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I think it would work very well as a summer garment, like a summer cardigan that you throw on top, like a camisole or a shirt, like a t-shirt, like a cotton t-shirt, and it just protects your shoulder in the evenings when maybe it's a little bit chillier. And I hope I can find like a yarn that's suitable. We're talking about like a DK weight yarn. So I don't know. I hope I can find a cotton slash linen slash silk combination in there to produce a summer appropriate version of this cardigan. What else do I want to tell you about this? Ooh, bind off. 
So I used my Iceland, not my, it's not my, I didn't invent it or anything. It, I used my favorite, I guess, bind off that I used for garter stitch and it's the Icelandic bind off. So it's quite stretchy, not too, too stretchy. To make it more stretchy, actually, what I usually do is I go up one needle size or two needle sizes this time i didn't do so because i don't know it seemed like i had a lot of stitches on my needles and i was like i don't think i need more stretch than a regular icelandic bind off in the same needle size so i didn't kind of try to get more stretch than what i could achieve with the same needle size but you can definitely kind of go up so I would recommend it if you have a garter stitch piece, either a shawl or a garter stitch cardigan, Icelandic bind off, I think is perfect. And in case you're interested in test knitting notes, this pattern was very, very easy to test knit. I actually did start maybe a couple of weeks after everyone else because I was waiting for my yarn. It took me a little bit to actually order it because I didn't know what color to go with. So I actually took my time. The test knit period was quite generous. I think it was a couple of months. So I was not in a rush, rush, rush to get my hands on the yarn and start knitting. So I think I started a couple of weeks after everyone else. By the time I actually started knitting, I think a few other people had found like two minor mistakes. I think they were in the pattern. So the designer already fixed those. And by the time I actually started, I didn't find any issue or mistake which was good. It really felt like just knitting a pattern who had been already test knitted. There was no Instagram group chat for this specific test knit. I do quite like being in the group chat with other people and comparing notes and comparing what yarn you're using, but it might be somewhat overwhelming for people. So if you're looking for a test knit that doesn't have a lot of that social aspect and social interaction, I think this designer might be good for you if you want to try your hand at test knitting. And if we do want to talk about test knits who have a little bit of that social aspect, which I do actually enjoy, let's move on to works in progress. This is the Anna Winter Sweater. The pattern is in testing, like I mentioned, and is from Louisa, who is the Knitting Deer. And it is a lovely combination of vast majority of like actual knitting so this is a top-down raglan sweater but it has a little bit of interest mm -hmm -hmm. these are crocheted is it how you say crocheted sure crocheted stripes on the body and on the sleeves as well how the pattern describes the crocheted stripes is perfect because i'm not a crocheter in the slightest, the only crocheting, crocheting, crochet things that I do are the provisional cast on, whenever I then need to pick up stitches in the crochet chain and knit off of that edge, and that's it. And I was able to make these stripes, so I think I can testify that the instructions are very clear. There are great pictures in the pattern, which kind of uh, hold your hand throughout the process of crocheting and then hiding your ends as well, which is very helpful. And I actually know that Louisa has plans to make a video tutorial as well, instead of just static pictures. I'm using the recommended yarn that is in the pattern and that was used for the first sample, I think, and it's called Soft Llama. This is actually 100% llama. I've never used llama yarn, actually baby llama. I don't know if it makes a difference from a baby llama to a llama in terms of the wool. I'm assuming so because I guess the baby alpaca is softer, for example, than adult alpaca. Anyway, this is the yarn. Very, very soft. With soft yarns, where your mind goes is that, oh, it might peel quite a lot. So I think that will be the case. I'm not holding this yarn with any other additional strand, no mohair strand. So I think we'll see, we'll experience a little bit of peeling, but it's so soft that I don't mind. So it's good. I think if you really hated peeling, but you wanted to use a baby llama wool, you might want to just 
hold it with a mohair strand or some other strand to give it more structure. That's what I usually do. The green one, I don't have any left over, but it's also the same quality, so the same exact yarn, just in a different color. I really like it. It's like a foresty, foresty green. I only had one issue during this test knit, is that I didn't have enough of the green yarn. I did buy the required quantity that, that was in the test knitting pattern, so the kind of the draft pattern. However, it wasn't enough to do four stripes across so as you can tell i have three on the body and on the arms and the sleeves and i actually had to use a different yarn a different color like the, the second color for the inside of my folded collar which i don't think it's a problem because no one will look inside my collar you're the only one actually now looking inside my collar but usually people don't kind of pick through my garments so i, I think i'm good I, I don't know, I really didn't want to buy another skein, another bow of this yarn because then I would have to pay for the shipping just for a single bowl. I didn't need any extra yarn or anything. I really have enough in my stash for a little bit. So I wanted to make use of the yarn that I had. So I did take out a little bit of the green that I already had used for the collar. I hadn't folded this double folded collar yet at the time where I realized that I didn't have enough yarn. So I kind of took some out before sewing down the double folded collar. So it wasn't, it wasn't too, too bad. I mean, unraveling your knitted stuff and having to redo them is never fun, I think, but I was willing to do it so that I didn't have to buy another bowl of yarn. I think actually looking at this modification of making only three stripes instead of four as I think a good modification for people who have shorter torsos like me, I don't think I'm super tall and I think if you have a shorter torso maybe four stripes might be too much like they might take over your entire body of the sweater so I think I can provide a good alternative, a good option for shorter people like me. So I'll see how it looks when it's done and we'll decide if it would have looked better with four stripes or if three was anyway like the ideal scenario. I don't know. I have some more of the body to do. I put the sleeves on hold. I think I'll do some more of the body and then soak this and block it and see if it grows a little bit and then I'll move forward to the ribbing. This is what I usually do actually. Like sleeves, body, block it and then do the ribbing. I mentioned it 300 million times already in past episodes but I think that's such a good advice because you can see how much the sleeve and the body stretched and assess if that's a good length to start the ribbing or not. If you do the ribbing already and then bind off, then you might go in for a surprise in terms of how much the body and sleeves stretched. And I don't think you would have the willpower to undo the bind off and adjust the length of the body and the sleeves. So I don't know, I, I try to prevent any issue in terms of like body length and sleeve length by blocking first and then do the ribbing. I don't have lots more to share about this pattern yet. You'll see this next time anyway, when it's all done, finished and hopefully blocked and we'll decide if three stripes are good looking on me. I mean, I'm good looking, so any amount of stripes is good looking on me. My next not yet work in progress, but it's at the swatch phase, is the current cardigan test knit by Korea Bea, also known as Rebecca. I guess it should be by Rebecca, also known as Korea Bea. Rebecca is her actual name, so I think that's what she wants to be called. <laughs> current cardigan, I just rewatched Rebecca's episode to nail the pronunciation. I don't think I nailed it, but better than I don't know what it sounded in my mind when I saw the pattern name. So moving forward, I swatched not once, not twice, not three times, not four. And I have another one. When I'm about to knit a pattern, I always like to swatch, but I don't think I typically make more than two swatches. I think two is my maximum. So I'll pick 
a needle size and then I'll go either up or down based on the learnings from the first swatch if I need to, if I don't get gauge right away, but like this time I went overboard. Reason one is because I had time, so I don't have the actual yarn that I'll be using for knitting the cardigan, and so I had time to swatch. I also had lots of leftover of the Sunness Garn Line, which is the yarn that I'll be using for this spring-summer cardigan, and so I had actually different colors to try with just for fun they look better right when they're in different colors and not just the same one the other reason i swatched this much is that the pattern is quite fun and addicting so it's not boring at all to go through so i could knit way more swatches and not complain at all so this is the i think needle size i will go with this is a lovely lace pattern which is not mindless because it's not like stock net and you can just like close your eyes and go with the flow but it is a very memorizable pattern it doesn't have like 10 row repeats or anything like that it's not mindless but as mindless as lace can be and it looks stunning it looks it doesn't look very holy right sometimes lace patterns can be like a very holy like too big of a hole. I don't love that look as much. I feel like this is a good combination of lace. Yes, I can tell it's lace, but it's also like compact enough, like to be fabric that actually covers your body. And I think the finished object will look very good. I plan, or I guess I ordered some green yarn, Sanders Garn Line, and I'm really looking forward to have it and actually start knitting on this, like the proper needed piece. Rebecca used wool for both of her samples. She made one with long sleeves and one with short sleeves, and I think both of them are actual wool. I am instead doing a more spring-summer version with linen, which is linen, viscose, and silk. I don't know. <clears throat> no. It's cotton, viscose, and linen. These are actually other leftovers that I have. There's a drops bell in there, which is quite comparable to the Sunness Garn Line. So I put the drops bell in there. And I'll be test knitting the long sleeve version with the V-neck. And I'm already picturing myself in the summer by the beach with maybe like a camisole underneath or like a, a lightweight shirt. And this long sleeve cardigan on top kind of draped, maybe falling off my shoulder a little bit like very sexy, so I'm on board. I don't think it'll take a long time to finish. I made this amount of swatches in maybe like a couple of days, knitting on other stuff as well. I don't know, I, I found it very fun. So I have very high hopes for this test knit and actually I have high hopes for the finished cardigan as well. It will actually be a bottom-up cardigan, which I'm so curious to see how much I love it. I've not done any cardigan actually that was bottom up. I always go top down, so I don't know, I'm interested to see. The challenge with bottom up construction is that you cannot, I think, 100% tell how long the body will come up to be because you have this panel of fabric that you kind of can hold near your armpits and you'll see how long it'll be. But since you're not wearing it, you don't know how exactly it will drape on your body and things like that. So I'm curious to see how the process will be for me and how I'll feel about it. I think that for a cardigan, the length doesn't matter too, 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 too much, or at least for me, for a summer cardigan that it's like drapey and holy, I don't care if it comes like around my waist or like below. I think I'll knit it slightly longer than the pattern calls for because I, I want to avoid any cropped anything and I like a cozy long cardigan. So I'll just make it a little bit longer than I think the pattern calls for and I, I'll be fine, I'm pretty sure. And out of curiosity, I don't know if you care about swatching and gauge, but I started swatching with wooden needle or bamboo needles. I think technically they are bamboo. So the first two swatches I made with bamboo needles, but I found it quite slow. You're doing yarn overs and knit two together, and I feel like wooden needles typically have not a super sharp point. And I think with lace, metal needles work better for me, at least for the style of knitting. And so 
I switched to testing with metal needles. <laughs> To distinguish that these were made with metal needles, I put metal stitch markers on them. Just to remember that these two I made with metal needles and I think the fabric that comes out is actually a little bit tidier. I don't know if I'm just like wishful thinking, looking at them, knowing that I enjoyed knitting this more makes me think this looks prettier and tidier and more neat. I don't know if that's the case, but I'll go with metal needles. And I think this is the fabric. This hips gauge. And so this is the fabric that I'm gonna go with. I did hip gauge with the wooden needles as well. I think this was the one that hip gauge. So I could have gone with these ones. It's just that I enjoyed it less and why make it less enjoyable for myself? Yeah, so technically that's not a work in progress, but I swatched and I wanted to kind of show off how good they looked. I mean, it's not thanks to me, probably it's thanks to Rebecca who designed the pattern, but I don't know. I usually unravel my swatches and reuse the yarn for something else. I don't know if it's a controversial opinion, actually, I don't know. But yeah, since I have so many and they look pretty good, I plan to actually, I don't know, put them somewhere. Maybe in a cork board. I've seen some knitters have their cork board with swatches behind them when they film a podcast, so I don't know. I'll consider it and see if I can make it a crafty project with this. I have other projects that are technically on my needles, but I didn't make a lot of progress. So I will not talk about them. The only one that I made a little bit of progress on is my brightest ever garter blanket. This is 50% um, acrylic and 50% wool. I'm mid-row, <laughs> not ideal, but you've seen this before. It's just a very relaxing garter stitch blanket that I knit on when I don't have good visibility. So like I'm in the dark in my daughter's bedroom and I've actually used it in front of the TV sometimes just for some mindless knitting and yeah, nothing special to it. I don't think I'll finish it in the next few weeks since I have other things on my needles. Or maybe I'll just keep it for the future whenever I need a palette cleanser. Is that how you say? Like something very mindless to knit on. That's it. If you want to stick around, I'll do five minutes of acquisitions and then I'll let you go to your endeavors of the day. The most exciting one is one that my husband is to thank for. So my husband was in Los Angeles, California for a week or so. And actually his hotel was quite close to a yarn store. He actually mentioned, hi. So there's a yarn store not too far from me. Do you want me to pick up anything? Here's the website. You can see if there's something. And I was scrolling through and I think the majority of the yarn brands were not like super exciting to me or like I've tried before. So it was like, I can get them in Europe. I won't ask you to bring them from there and put them in your suitcase. However, while I was scrolling, these appeared. Uh, I'm exaggerating. Also, I'm holding this upside down. There we go. So this is Noro yarn, which is definitely not super easily available here in Europe or at least in Italy. And this is actually the one with a very long name, Silk Garden Sock Solo in the S1 color Omitama, I think. My main girl, Petit Knit, who is probably my favorite designer, uses this exact yarn and color for a very cozy sweater, which I'll put a picture of. And so I plan to do something similar, maybe without the high collar, folded collar, and maybe just a simple one. And I'll also do sleeves that are regular length and not like the sleeves that are in the pattern pictures because they, they look quite long too long for me. I bought a Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair to hold with and I hope it'll mute down these spring-like colors a little bit and just provide more cohesion in the finished fabric. And the Knitting for Olive is in marzipan. I have three of the Noro big balls and they should be enough for a sweater in my size. Little backstory on the next acquisition. So what I've done is I took this from my stash. This is Filcolana Arveta in a marzipan color and Filcolana Tilia in a green tea 
color. This is a mohair and this is a fingering wool and I bought them with the intention of holding them together to produce a light green fabric. However, this swatch doesn't look particularly green. It looks really like Mars pen. Like maybe there's a hint of green in there, but really the tilia doesn't show through, doesn't shine through. And so I think if I were to hold this together, the green tea will kind of get lost a little bit and I do not want that. So I will break this couple apart. I will use, I think this for maybe like a fingering sweater actually. There's a coloring book tee, I think it's called, which is a fingering gauge. Like you can knit it with just a fingering wool or like a fingering strand of yarn. And I think it might work well. And I don't have really any fingering weight sweater that I hand knit myself. This is store-bought, like I mentioned. So I would benefit from a fingering sweater out of this yarn. And so this one, I'm not the person who would enjoy knitting a full mohair sweater or cardigan by itself. And so what I've done is I bought a green fingering wool to go together. And I went for my staple drops flora and I have not swatched with them together yet. I have lots of things in progress right now, so I don't want to add one more, but I hope that this combination will be green enough for my likings. I think it might actually become too green. So I don't know if the Tilia will mute it down as much, but I'm excited to have a green sweater. I don't think I have one in this shade. I do love green, but I don't have something similar. I plan to make my first and I don't think last Semper sweater by the Knit Per Girl. My friend Lina from Knitting Time is the number one fan of the Semper sweater and she uses it as like her basic raglan sweater pattern and so I want to see what all the fast is about and knit a Semper sweater for myself. I want to see if I like it more than my usual no frills sweater by Petit Knit and so I think I can then give you maybe a comparison when I'm done with this one. That's it. I hope I didn't rush through things as much. I kind of tried to keep a good momentum so that we were not surprised by husband and daughter coming home. And so yeah, I think I covered everything that I wanted to show you and I hope you're doing well. I didn't even mention, I didn't even ask you how you're doing today. I just went straight to the knitting. But yeah, I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a relaxing day ahead or if you are about to go to work or like you are about to go, things are not super relaxing, then just think at the end of your day or in the next weekend, then you'll take some time for yourself and relax and do some knitting or crocheting if you want to. Thank you for sticking around and listening to me rambling about knitting and crocheting because now I'm a crocheter. I knit like nine stripes and I call myself a crocheter. Love you very much and I'll see you next time. Bye.